This is the Snapmaker U1, the first low-cost tool changer 3D printer. You might have heard about it. Yeah, this has been doing the rounds a lot for the last four months in the community. Uh, there have been a lot of videos that have come out about this printer, and it's made it, this video sort of hard to do because I don't really like repeating information that you can already find online, but I've done my best and gave my honest report on this printer, its strengths, its weaknesses, its advantages, and its foibles. And this, I should say, is the production unit. It is not the prototype, uh, which you probably have seen in a lot of review videos. No, this is the one that is going to be sold. This is the one that you will get. Why a tool changer? Multicolor with limited waste and wait time for color changes. Yes, multicolor is great. You get beautiful prints, but multi-material is where this shines to a point. And we'll get to that. So basic info first. This is a 270 by 270 by 270 millimeter build volume four tool tool changer with a max speed of 500 millimeters per second and acceleration of 20k. Each hot end has a max temperature of 300 degrees and a max flow of 32 millimeters cubed per second. The nozzle is stainless steel. The bed has a max temp of 100 degrees. It runs clipper firmware and the slicer is a variant of Orca. You can bind via cloud or you can use the printer in LAN only mode. Next, we got to talk about the price because this is incredibly affordable compared to the tool changer that came before it, the Prusa XL. 850 euro, 4,300 euro. I think this one's cheaper. Yes, there is a size difference and there is an extra tool for the Prusa XL for that price, but that price difference is just nuts. And of course, Everyone else in the industry has noticed this with lots of tool changing tech options being released and announced in the last few months. 2026 is gonna be wild. But anyway, let's get back to the specs. 270 by 270. Uh, remember when like the standard size was 220 by 220? The Ender 3 was the standard the version one, I mean. When Bamboo came along the X1 and related printers was 256 by 256. Printers are just getting a little bit larger over time, the standard size. Now, I wouldn't really call this standard. It's like a, between standard and the 300 by 300, which is like what you might call large. I'm pretty happy about this. This is not so bad. So you get a little bit of extra leg room with this printer. And the obvious four tools, the main selling point of this printer for fast tool changes, fast color changes. So how fast is a tool change? Demonstration is in order. And how about the AMS? Yep. Mm -hmm. And how much waste for the U1? Yeah. And how much waste for the AMS? Hmm. The hot end is, yeah, it's, it's, pretty familiar. Everyone is copying the bamboo style hot end with the low thermal mass block and kind of vertically stretch out heat sink. And wh why not? It's, it's a great hot end design. It dissipates heat really well with minimal airflow and it heats up fast. It's a great hot end. So there are no real surprises with this one. It's 300 degrees maximum. The printer comes with stainless steel nozzles as standard. So I really wouldn't recommend using uh, abrasive filament on this until you get the hardened steel variant. And yes, there will be some. But is it quick swap? Well, no. In order to remove the hot end and replace it, you need to take off the tool. You need to take off the tool board cover. You need to unplug the thermistor and the heater and then unscrew the hot end. It's not difficult, but it just takes a lot more time than say a bamboo quick swap hot end. And talking about hot end capability brings me on to what I immediately noticed when seeing this printer for the first time. There is no cover here. Now, you can get one, but out of the box, no ABS, no ASA, no nylon, no polycarbonate. This is designed for PLA, PTG, TPU, 
and PCTG. And we'll talk more about material capability a little bit later. Getting set up is straightforward. There's nothing unfamiliar about this. However, it does take a little bit of time. For each spool holder, there is a motor to feed to each tool. Although it doesn't feed all the way, it does it until just before reaching the tool. You then have to load via the menu and each tool needs to be leveled and oriented before printing starts. And of course, there is a normal pre-print calibration and heat up too. This is how long everything takes from filament in to first layer. Yeah, that's more than the average printer, but for what you're getting, I can live with that. Okay, so you loaded up your filament and you're good to go. So let's let's print something. And to do that, we are using Snapmaker Orca. And by the way, Snapmaker, thank you for using Orca and Orca, thanks just for being Orca. Snapmaker Orca is, well, it's Orca, just with the bind to account, remote monitoring, some custom settings, machine specific G-code and machine specific calibration. Vanilla Orca doesn't have that, but you can connect via LAN mode with full multi-tool capability. Having pretty much full capability on Orca Slicer is something the industry was, was gradually moving away from. So it is actually quite reassuring to see that Snapmaker are doing this. Reassuring is the word. Okay, we tried a few pre-sliced files. Let's see what they look like. I can see no ringing, no VFAs, no color bleed. What you do see here is simply because the yellow is transparent and the blue sort of shines through. Layer consistency is okay. We do get a bit of offset as is common with multicolor devices, but I think it's slightly worse here. Overhangs are good. I think what I didn't like most about our prints was the support interface settings, uh, but of course that can be tweaked. PLA prints are good. Quality is just good. I can't really complain about any of this. Even steep overhangs came in nicely. What other filaments did we say? So PATG and TPU. Now this is where I think this printer really, really stands out because it has obviously multi-material capability. You can mix different filaments, different polymers. And PATG and TPU are a great combination because they stick relatively well to each other. And with these, you're mixing a rigid part with a flexible part. So you can get capabilities that you couldn't get with other AMS type devices. I am going to print Extrude Tim's multi-material doorstop. We have a rigid PTG part for stability and a soft TPU part for that door to dig in and get some grip and prevent any impacts from damaging the PETG. And this is how it came out. Pretty nicely actually, but we gotta see if it works. Let's give it a shot. Seems to work. Impact resistant. <laughs> I've never used a tool changer before and I've never really delved much into multi-material. You can sort of do it with an AMS, but not that well. Likewise, I've never designed for multi-material, but I've had that opportunity recently with our daily spatula. I love this spatula and uh, we've used it for years. Unfortunately, it's uh, lately been suffering from loose handle syndrome. And as you can see, the uh, wooden part is actually uh, a little bit broken. I designed this basic handle, but a larger to fit my hand better and with some Seb's parts to make it more grippy and just more comfortable to use. Okay, how about some things that I've noticed about this printer that uh, were not totally perfect. The Slicer Device Page Connect is a, a little bit slow. Uh, unlike most other printers where you load up the slicer, you go to the device and it loads for like a second and it's there. Um, this takes a while, like five to ten seconds sometimes actually. I don't know why. Um, I don't think it's a problem with us. Uh, I've noticed other people have uh, mentioned this in, in their videos. So it's obviously a printer slicer issue. It's not a big deal, but I uh, thought it was worth mentioning just in case it happens to you and you're wondering if there's something wrong with your printer or such. Yeah, slicer estimates and real world print times are uh, wrong. Slicer is consistently optimistic. It seems to be more inconsistent with more tool changers. So it's obviously an issue with the slicer not calculating those perfectly. The shell seems like a little bit flimsy, but it's just the shell, it's not the frame. So I wouldn't really be too concerned about that. 
we had a small problem with one of the spool holders. I would like to add that it wasn't me who did this. It was a certain other person who will remain nameless. Okay, bed adhesion. So uh, the first time I tried this multi-material print with the PTG and TPU, um, it actually warped slightly on the PTG right at this corner here. Um, and we're using a generic profile for this. I was using our own PTG with this, and I noticed in the generic profile that the the, uh, the bed heating was a bit high. It was actually set at 80 degrees. So I changed it uh, to our normal 70 and uh, it's a lot better, but there is just a tiny, tiny bit of warping still. Um, and this is probably caused most likely by the uh, sharp corner here. Like it does a uh, really, really tight corner there. Um, and that probably loosens the adhesion. But um, well, the issue is with this PEI, uh, it's a little more finely textured than most, and there's probably a little less grip, I think, on this, but that might be something that you guys need to know about when you are building your profile. Okay, so who is this printer for? Well, that max 300 degree hot end is completely different from the trend of other flagship printers going up to 320 or 350, and having printers as well that have closed chambers and heated chambers, actively heated chambers. This doesn't have any of this. And regarding the cover for this, which you will be able to get, it's going to be very vertically challenged to fit these PTFE tubes. And they did say that it's not going to be actively heated. It's going to be passively heated. So there is a lot more volume of air to heat up. Um, I'm interested to see how that will work with ABS and nylon and other filaments that are sensitive to uh, low temperatures and variations in temperatures. This is a great printer for those who want to do multicolor and multi-material projects for their home and other kind of small projects like that. But if you're looking to print nylon and polycarbonate and other high strength materials like that, this is probably not the printer for you. This is a printer for the masses. This is a printer for everyone who has an AMS who wants to get faster color swaps and less purge waste. By having a tool changer printer like this, you're not just saving time. You're saving money by not throwing away filament down a poop chute. If you are printing a lot of multicolor, I cannot recommend this printer enough. And if you are that person, then the only thing that should be stopping you from seriously considering this printer is if you want one that does high strength materials as a speciality, or if you want to wait for one that will be an upgrade kit. Now, I can't say that they don't have advantages, but this printer at this price, it's still some pretty stiff competition for them. Thanks for watching our video, guys. Let us know in the comments down below what you think about this printer and other multi-material options. There is also our Discord server where there is printer talk on a daily basis. We'll be back with another video next week. So until then, later.